In this video, we're gonna go over epic Magic the Gathering turn one wins. Our first clip features Brian Cook from the Epic Storm, and he's running the Goblin Charbelcher deck. The namesake card of the deck costs four generic mana, with an activated ability of three generic and tapping it. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land card. Goblin Charbelcher deals damage equal to the number of non-land cards revealed this way to target creature or player. Spoiler alert, there's no lands in this deck. The plan is simple. Play this card and one-shot your opponent. And if all the stars line up, it's going to be over in one turn. Go to three. All right, we have LED Echo. We're going to keep this. Okay. Mulligan to three. So Brian has a killer three card hand, which involves Lion's Eye Diamond and Echo of Eons. Lion's Eye Diamond, which costs zero, lets you discard your hand and add three mana of any color. And we want Echo of Eons in the graveyard because it costs three mana to flash it back from your graveyard, and it says, each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and draws seven cards. Lion's Eye Diamond. At three blue, spin the wheel. And this is a turn one win on a mulligan to three. Belcher. Diamond. Okay, activate Belcher, target you. Ooh. Turn one win on a mulligan to three! <laughs> Love it. So Echo of Eons drew Bryant the perfect seven card hand. It's got the Goblin Char Belcher and enough mana rituals and artifacts that add mana to cast the Char Belcher and activate its ability to one shot the opponent to death. Opponent must be like, where's my turn? But Bryant's not done with the turn one wins as he shows off the power of the Neo Brand deck. The deck revolves around a card called Neoform, which for a blue and a green is a sorcery and as an additional cost to cast this spell, you have to sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. The creature we will sacrifice is Allosaurus Rider, which costs seven mana, but we can cheat it in play by exiling two green cards from your hand rather than pay Allosaurus Rider's mana cost. Neoform exchanges Allosaurus Rider for something way more devastating, Grizzlebrand. This 7-7 seven, seven flying lifelink creature has one devastating activated ability. Pay seven life, draw seven cards. And if you can draw your whole deck, the world's your oyster. Wait, this is a turn one? Um, reveal, pitch, pitch, Neo. Yeah, this is a turn one. Okay, I didn't think I'd get multiple turn ones this league, but here we are. All right, Shepard. Pitch, pitch. Neoform. Brian starts the game with Chancellor of the Tangle, which says, you may reveal this card from your starting hand. If you do, you get to start the game with a green in your mana pool to help cast your Neoform. <laughs> Maybe this opponent will let me attack with an angry dinosaur. I would appreciate that. Okay, so we've activated once. Let's activate again. All right, so we hit the shoal. Let's thin our deck. Go get the Autocron Worm. So Brian plays Summoner's Pack for free, which lets him look through his library for any green creature card he wants and put it into his hand. The downside is at the beginning of his next turn, he's got to pay four mana or he loses the game. Oh no, whatever will we do? Guess we'll just have to win the game this turn. I guess we can get a rider. It's easier to draw Thrasta. Uh, pitch the... Uh, Whatever it's called, Autocrown Worm. So now we get to draw 14. And this puts us to seven. At six life, Brian couldn't pay the seven life to draw seven more cards. So what does he do? He casts Nourishing Shoal. Exiling a creature in his hand, he gains a ton of life to keep drawing those cards. Play the drum. Uh, pitch 
these two, I guess. Let's uh, cast this as well. We'll get another Thrasta. Play a Rider. Pitch Neoform and Veil of Summer. I need to tap the Crystal Brand for green. All right, so now we have three elves. So you would think Allosaurus Rider was a dinosaur, but upon closer inspection, it is a elf warrior. This just in, magic art has nothing to do with its creature type. So with two Allosaurus Riders on the battlefield, he played Heritage Druid, which says tap three elves, added three green to his mana pool, and played Thrasta, Tempest's Roar. <laughs> which only cost us two green mana because it gets three generic less for each spell we played this turn, and we played a million of them. Now we cast this. 24, 24 power angry dino. <laughs> Giant T-Rex attack. And the icing on the cake is fortifying draught, targeting our Thrasta, which will make her just as big as we gained life this turn, and we gained tons of life with Nourishing Shoal. Thrasta attacks this turn because she has haste, and for 24 damage, the game is over. Uh, thank you to the opponent for not conceding, I do appreciate that. Look at that T-Rex just getting in there, 24-24, love it. Forget Neo Brand, this is Dinosaur Tribal. This next turn one win is going to be performed by Maven, playing the Luka deck. It features a creature called Plane Bound Accomplice, which for three mana gets you a 1-3 creature, but it's got a very special activated ability for one red. You may put a Planeswalker card from your hand onto the battlefield. And that Planeswalker card is Luka, Copper Coat Outcast. And we're going to use the minus two ability Targeting the plane bound accomplice. Exile target creature you control. Then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And there's only going to be one creature in the deck more expensive than your plane bound accomplice, and that is Emrakul the Ion's Torn. Nothing beats the flying spaghetti monster. But how on earth is this going to get pulled off on turn one? Let's take a look at the action. That is a keep because that is a turn one. That is a turn one. Emrakul. <laughs> All right, we're absolutely keeping this. I'm going to put Gemstone Caverns in play, and I'm going to exile Blood Moon. So she's off to a good start with the Gemstone Caverns on the draw, which says if Gemstone Caverns is in your opening hand and you are not the starting player, you may begin the game with Gemstone Caverns on the battlefield with a luck counter on it. If you do exile a card from your hand, effectively what this card does is you steal going first in the game because before the game even starts, you already have a land in play. Do not thought seize me. This would be the greatest moment of my life. I've never turned one in Emrakul in Modern. Do not kill me now. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, it's gonna happen. Oh yes. This is gonna be the greatest moment of my life. All right. Pyretic Ritual. Desperate Ritual. Plane Bound Accomplice. Activate him. Lucka. Minus. Emrakul. Turn one, your go. <laughs> and they scoop it up. And I totally understand that they scooped it up because I would do the same thing. It's a piece of cake to bake a pretty cake. All you need is two tablespoons of rituals to get you four mana, one cup of plain bound accomplice, a pound of Luca, and voila, you get a sweet emrakul on turn one. But you gotta do the cooking by the book or else your cake will end up crazy. So the player with the pathetic zero one creature stared down the 1515 flying alien monstrosity and decided to pass it in. Maven wins in a single turn. So in our next turn one win, we're going to be watching THC James play in a MTG Arena format where apparently anything goes because his deck consists of only dark rituals to add mana, sign in bloods to draw cards, and tendrils of agony to kill the opponent. He starts the game off by saying good game, which is a power move. Uh, but it's accurate because his opponent is already dead. He just doesn't know it yet.
The only game plan is to play one swamp and play a bunch of rituals, and then sign in bloods that target himself, which makes him lose two life, but draw two cards. After he's played enough spells, he can cast Tendrils of Agony, which says target player loses two life and you gain two life. But it has the storm mechanic, which means he gets a copy of the card for each other spell he's played this turn. And he played a million rituals and sign in bloods. So I've saved the best for last because this clip isn't technically a turn one win. It's a turn zero win! Saffron Olive is playing the Valky Cascade deck. You used a card like Violent Outburst and it had the triggered ability Cascade. When you play this spell, remove cards from the top of your library from the game until you remove a non-land card that costs less. You may play it without paying its mana cost. The only card that costs less than Violent Outburst is Valky God of Lies. But if you turn it over, it's Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. And the thing is, the rules were stupid back then. If you cascaded into Valky God of Lies, you could just immediately put the flipped side, even though it costs seven mana, onto the battlefield. With these devastating abilities letting you play cards from exile, and you get to exile the top card of each player's library and exile your opponent's artifacts and creatures. Was that fair? Absolutely not! Let's take a look at the action. Oh my goodness. Wait, can we turn zero, Tibalt? Looks like. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to maybe end the stream. Yeah, we're gonna upkeep it before they get to do anything. Upkeep stops that we will keep. <laughs> Turn zero, Tibble! <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's not bad. So we will gemstone cave our opponents. Oh, this is hilarious. Get rid of Bone Crusher, Simeon Spirit Guide, Simeon Spirit Guide, Violent Outburst. So Saffron Olive starts the game with the Gemstone Caverns on the draw, and he puts a stop at his opponent's upkeep. That's right before his opponent even draws a card to start the game. And he's got two Simeon Spirit Guides in hand, which he can exile to add red mana. And between the Harambes and the Gemstone Caverns, he's able to cast Violent Outburst before the game even begins. <laughs> Tybalt! Turn zero, Tybalt! <laughs> Pona says, wow, all I have to say is, wow, me too. Uh, well, good games. <laughs> Poor opponent. Poor opponent. They had turned one Flood Moon off Double Simeon Spear Guide, and then turned zero, Tybalt! <laughs> I want to play one more spell, though. <laughs> About it. Noble Hierarch. And scoops it up. <laughs> Saffron Olive wins without taking a single turn. But this whole interaction between playing a Cascade spell and putting a Planeswalker card that costs more than it onto the battlefield ended up getting the rules changed so you can't do that anymore. You can only play the front or back of the card if its mana cost is less than the Cascade spell. Which of these turn one wins were your favorite? Let me know in the comments section below. Smash like for MTG Harambe and don't forget to subscribe to my channel or you're gonna lose your next emote war.